I'm Paul Parker, a certified tech down at Eagle Marine. Today we're going to be doing a uh, pre-delivery water test on this boat. real purpose of this is just to make sure that before the customer takes delivery of the boat, everything is set up to manufacturer specs and that they'll be happy when they get it. Before we like to put the boat in the water, I like to take a chance to pull around, check the cosmetics on the outside of the boat for any imperfections, it's striping, anything that just stands out so we can address that if you need to before the customer takes delivery. Uh, I also take the chance to get the motor off the trailer bracket. And take an opportunity to look at all the rigging to make sure everything on it is going to be tight. the boat down here at the uh, ramp ready to go in the water just gonna unhook it from the trailer and let it coast in I just like to take the actual slack off the winch strap so you don't have to let the whole strap run out by cleaving it off to the dock if you've got a dock set up like this at the ramp it's, uh, it's a whole lot easier than letting the whole strap run itself out. So the boat's in the water. I'm just gonna go park the truck and then when I get back down here, we'll go through the whole boat. So part of the long list that we go through before any customer receives their boat is to make sure that all the fit and finish work on the boat is to our standards. Uh, we wanna make sure that all the hatches latch tightly. We don't wanna have any rattles or shakes going along in the water. We wanna make sure that there's no hidden imperfections in the gel coat or anything that could've been missed at any earlier point. Uh, so at this point, I like to go through, open the anchor locker, the fish boxes, live wells, anything and everything that can be opened just to make sure that it fits as it's supposed to. Um, I also take the chance to go over the upholstery, look for any imperfections there, make sure all the snaps line up, and just take the chance to be thorough. Ultra by Sea Hunt. Boat comes standard with the bow cushions in the front and bolsters, stereo, things like that. They make a few different models depending on what you want to do with it. Uh, one option. So, one of the favorite features on this boat is the removable backrests. They come out so you can stow them, then you can stow the bow cushions as well. That way, if you do want to use the front area of the boat or as a fishing boat, you're definitely able to do so and save your upholstery from getting stained by all that fish blood from what you'll catch it. One specific thing that we like to do, being that the boat's in the water, we can't really check this in the yard. Uh, I like to go into the boat to make sure that I don't have any water intrusion from anywhere. This boat 
does have a live well and a raw water wash down, both of which I'll check when I do the, um, the electrical system on it with you guys. But the one thing I do want to make sure is that there's no water getting in from any point, which it shouldn't be. So through this six and a half inch diameter, I'm able to see in. I can see the bilge pump, which I'll test to make sure the automatic function works. I can see the uh, live well and the raw water wash down, both through a single through hole fitting that has a ball cock to shut off the valve. Um, mostly for an emergency situation, but again, I like to make sure everything moves freely, so if we have to, we have it to use. So the valve moves as it's supposed to, the automatic bilge pump kicks on with the float switch. Um, we'll put this back together and then we're going to go through the electrical on the boat. So starting in the start of the boat, I'm going to go through the electrical system and make sure that it's up to par. Uh, first and foremost, I start at the beginning with the battery. Uh, it's both got a single battery. If it's got dual batteries, I make sure that each one of them is secured down to the floor, to the deck inside the bilge. I also make sure that my battery connections are tight with hex nuts, not wing nuts. Uh, from there, I go up to the dash and one item at a time, I check the accessories on the boat. Anything from the lights, snap lights, courtesy lights. So on this boat, a spreader light because it has a T-top as well as any of the pumps and accessories. Uh, it has a the Garmin uh, GPS multi-function head unit. Got our bow light obviously on the front. Up top, we have a stern light on the top of the T top. Also functions as an anchor light. Down the line, we've got cockpit lights to illuminate the floor of the boat at night. Manual switch for the bilge pump, which I tested the automatic bilge pump when I was in there. I can hear that running. I have a switch for a live well. For the live well to function, there's also a valve inside the live well compartment that's got to be open, so I'm going to make sure that it's flowing. has a raw water wash down which is going to allow you to be able to wash the boat while you're out at sea using the water that it's actually floating in. That flows freely. Uh, nice thing about this pump is that it's actually pressure operated pump so it has a switch on it. If you were using a garden hose with a nozzle, when you shut the nozzle off the pump will sense the pressure and it will shut itself off so you're able to actually leave the switch on while the, uh, while the uh, pump isn't running. Uh, boat has a number of accessory switches, just for anything optional that you wanted to add aftermarket. This customer again on the and the standard Horizon VHF radio. Both of those are powering up. And then last but not least on this list of switches is the horn, which is obnoxious as could be. Turn on the stereo, make sure that that makes noise at all four speakers around the boat. the stereo works. One thing I like to do just to make sure that the VHF radio has got a good connection to its antenna is actually put it on a weather station so I can hear them transmitting the weather. The radio works. While I'm up top in the electronics box it has a spreader light. It's going to be used to illuminate the aft deck. 
better light comes on. And that's pretty much everything on the electrical system that I go through. All right, so now we're going to, uh, to check out the gauges, and then we're going to fire the engine up, make sure everything goes as it's supposed to with that. Another nice thing about having the boat in the water for these tests is that we can actually ensure that it shifts as it's supposed to. The gauges are going through a self-check. Self-test is completed. I always like to let them finish that before I go ahead and start it. With the fuel injection, nice feature is that you don't actually have to choke the motor or prime the fuel ball. It's a matter of turnkey start, just like any car these days. The fuel injection is the best way to go. Uh, once it's started and running, I go through the screens on the gauges, make sure that they all read everything that they're supposed to. These digital multifunction gauges will actually read everything from battery voltage, engine temperature, engine hours, um, uh, fuel consumption, which is a big thing for boaters today. They want to know what they're burning for fuel in gallons per hour. But these also feed off of a GPS signal to give you speed over ground. The gauge is capable of doing the math and telling you what you burn miles per gallon, which is the most important number in reality of what you're going to be doing for efficiency. So if I scroll through, I've got fuel flow, temperature, engine hours, a trim gauge, and GPS speed. I've got fuel range in miles, fuel tank. GPS speed, fuel economy, miles per gallon. And I go back to GPS speed on that one as well. I've also got the ability to have a digital tachometer. Even though it's shown an analog tachometer and an analog speedometer, I can go digital and view either one of those if I wanted to. Uh, at this point, being I'm tied to the dock, I take the chance to actually test the safety lanyard, make sure it shuts the key off as it's supposed to in the event that anyone goes overboard. I also take the opportunity to check the start and gear protection. The motor will not start if it is engaged in either forward or reverse. So I'll mechanically engage it, I'll turn the key, and it won't actually crank. Uh, that's just a safety feature that they want so people don't fall off the boat when they go to start it. So we'll crank it up, we'll start it again. I'm going to go to the back of the boat, take the motor cover off, and look for leaks on the fuel, oil, or any water leaks. take a chance, make sure that I don't have anything kinked or crimped coming into the rigging tube. I also like to make sure that I have enough slack in the rigging when I turn the motor side to side. Nothing's going to want to bind up between the hydraulic steering, fuel lines, wire harnesses, or control cables. Uh, I take a chance, make sure I don't have anything leaking as far as oil, any manufacturing defects, before I go to take the boat out and give it a performance test. Everything looks good. Now we're going to take the opportunity to take the boat out, run it in open water, check the performance that it's going to do what it's supposed to.
So we're here in the Cape Cod Canal. We're actually going to take this chance, being in calm water, to get the boat up to wide open throttle and make sure that she actually performs to manufacturer specifications. Uh, if anything is out, what we'll end up doing when we get back to the shop is changing the prop out to a different pitch to meet the manufacturer specifications, which is going to be somewhere around 5800 RPM.